Slaves here with the Senior Pickleball Report, powered by TNC Network. Let's get it going. Today in our People of Pickleball episode, we're speaking with Chuck Stewart. He is a performance therapist, and he works with JBB United out of the National Pickleball League. And he talks all things movement and why working on our movement and staying healthy is really a, probably a pretty good option as we get older. Um, and uh, so it's kind of a continuing series of uh, really how to stay on the court and the best practices for that. But before we get to that, if you like all the content that we have on this channel, consider subscribing and you know subscribe to our newsletter as well and check out all the links in the description below for uh, Chuck's work and all our discounts on you name it, everything in pickleball. All right, let's get to that conversation with Chuck. All right, we have Chuck Stewart, performance therapist, and he's been working with JBB United out of the National Pickleball League this season. Welcome to the Senior Pickleball Report, Chuck. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. So, you know, yeah, before we get into the work you do, which is vital for old guys like me, um, <laughs> especially playing a, a sport where there's all this lateral movement and, you know, yeah. uh, lower lower back stuff, um, yeah. because what, what you do is very important and obviously very important for uh, important enough where a JBB United has brought you in to um, maintain their team, so to speak. Uh, but before we get to that, let's talk about pickleball in general and how the sport kind of came into your world and, um, you know, in some cases really starting to take over parts of your, your, your life. (laughs) Literally. Um, I love that. And this is always a conversation starter, as you know, and, uh, others know, like when you first start playing a sport, it's like, how'd you get started? Right. And that's always our story. Uh, for me, I, it, it came into my world and it's still coming into my world to this day. Um, about a year and a half ago, I mean, I, I touched uh, pick, on pickleball a little bit during COVID, of course. And then about a year and a half ago, I took it real serious. Um, I My best friend of like 32 years was a professional racquetball player. And then he and his and his uh, dad got into pickleball and I would have them come to my gym and do uh, workouts every morning at 6 a.m. And then after afterwards, they would always leave and go play pickleball for two hours. I'm like, how are these guys? They do this still. <laughs> and I, I was like, all right, I can jump in and join them. And let's just say I drank the Kool-Aid then. And then what I <laughs> what I realized is that I was getting smoked and just my just getting just torched by uh, men and women, my parents age. Right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 40s, but men and women, my parents age. And I would always say, don't let those ace bandages fool you. And. <laughs> so being at the, you know, long story short, I, um, figured out even with myself, uh, there's longevity in this. Um, I've got some men and women that are, again, my parents age that are just still super active. And right. it, it is a very lateral sport, but before I found out that a lot of the individuals playing this sport had a foundation in another sport, sometimes at a high level, um, I realized for myself, okay, at 40, I could probably do this for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. Right. And still be active. And it's something different than lifting weights, uh, jujitsu or Muay Thai or anything like that. So um, and if you treat it right, like any sport, if you treat pickleball right, it's going to treat you right. And that's that's how it started with me. And I hired a coach, learned how to hit. And my goal was is like, hey, man, I know how much it costs. I know what it takes, but I just want you to make me comfortable going anywhere and playing anywhere and just being able to play. I want to be able to paddle up and play with confidence. Winning or losing, I'll figure that out as we go. But I just want to paddle up and play. So that's how I got started. Here we are. And here we are. You're right. Yeah, I I understand. I totally understand uh, the the getting beat by uh, people in in knee braces and (laughs) and things like that. Because it looks like when you walk on the court, it's just if the game feels simple, you're like, oh, I can do this and I can rip the ball and I can... And then, you know, yep. you feel like, well, man, I could get really good. And then you play somebody who's been playing a while and they just run man. you around. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, again, that's, that was me. I'm sweating bullets and it's, you know, yeah. it, we've only, they've only scored one point or two and I'm, I'm, I'm sweating. I'm running around and <clears throat> to your point, it's very humbling. It was very humbling in my head. Right. I'm thinking wiffle ball and a paddle. 
Right. Tennis paddle weighs way less than a baseball bat or a football. There's yeah. how can this be hard to do? Right. And uh yeah, an hour and a half later, I'm still trying to figure it out, you know. That right, day. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Like, talk a yeah. little bit about what 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 was your sports background? What was your athletic background? Like what some of the things you did so, uh, prior? Yeah, football and wrestling. And then after yeah. that, um I played at a, a junior college level of football and mm-hmm. and then um I got into, I was a strength coach for 12 years Okay. Uh, before I became a performance therapist. And yeah. with that uh, strength and conditioning, I always, um, my average day, I'm from Chicago and I was okay. an undergrad strength coach at Northwestern University. And uh-huh. on those 12 hour days, I would get my work done in about eight hours okay. only because I was always peeking in on what the recovery side of things was doing. I was getting my athletes ready in the weight room. Um, I was always getting them ready for their competition or keeping them at ready for their sport on and off the field. But there was something about what the recovery side of things was doing that kind of was like the glue to it. And I was always nosy and poking in. So in my eight hours, I would get my 12 hours worth of work done and go right. and see what they're doing in recovery, sit in it myself and figure out, figure out myself. So what I didn't understand, what I didn't know at the time is I was slowly grooming myself to become a performance therapist because yeah. I was, I was really good at, and I say this humbly, I was really good at being a strength coach. I had an athlete for six to eight months or I mean, six to 12 months mm-hmm. and I, it was measurable. I would implement right. a strength program and keep them going. Tennis players. I, I had time, but um, to keep going with it, it, it just became something that I was slowly starting again to fall in love with the recovery process of my athletes. Yeah. And lo and behold, I go, I find out I'm not going to get hired at Northwestern. I go down to Tampa and interview at yeah. Tampa university and I suffered a knee injury. Oh, and I fell in love with the recovery process. Yeah. And that's when the, the light bulb went off. I went and got some credentials and now Western medicine. And now that's, that's why I am where, where, where I am now is because I put those two things together. So, okay. The performance so, therapist. Yeah. So talk things. about, a, about, I mean, because the recovery is not the glamorous part of the job. Most people, it's, it's they not. basically overlook recovery and then we all <laughs> pay for it later. Um, yeah, and yeah, I know this, yeah. I was a distance runner. I played a lot okay. of sand volleyball over the years, baseball, you name it. And, um, you know, you can get away with things when you're a little younger. Sometimes sure. um, you don't have any sort of catastrophic injuries, but right. those little things start to build over time. And when you make it into your late thirties, early forties, fifties, um, some of those things come back to haunt you. So talk about, you know, being a performance therapist, what you like, w- give me some aspects and some uh, dimensions of what you do. Basically, um, let's use JBG, JBB, for example. Okay, great. Um, Prefer- that's, that's a, that's a team of, you know, anywhere at one time we'll have, uh, 14 to 16 players. Right. Right. And I like to look at what I do, and this is my approach as a performance therapist. I implement, uh, dynamic warmups, right. To prevent the injuries. Right. Um, and I implement, uh, recovery techniques and modalities to keep the athlete playing. You're playing more than one match in a day. Right. So, um, all of this is on the premise of the foundation of, um, if you're on my table or you're coming to see me in my corner, it's for a good thing, not a bad thing. And it's just, again, to keep you going. So I like to look at myself as the pit stop, the pit crew for the team. Come in, let's change your tires. Let's, let's okay. rotate yeah, those yeah, tires, yeah. refuel you and keep you in the game. So that, those things include, yeah, those things include cupping, uh, stretching, um, you know, I use my hands for the manual therapy, um, mm-hmm. the massage gun, whatever it is. And the gift in the, in the curse of it all, like the, the challenge that I love about it is, again, we have more than 10 athletes playing at one time right. and one, and one day. So that's 10 different individuals. That's 10 different issues. And that's 10 different solutions I got to come up with. Yeah. And they're all measurable. It's great. And my hand, yeah. I keep my, um, handy dandy notebook with me just in case they want to know the who, what, when, where, and why did you do this for me, Chuck? And why did it work? And right. yeah, just use a little bit of technology and give them the feedback. And so that's kind of what I implement uh, in short with, with the team. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's yeah. very similar to pickleball. You're solving a puzzle. 
You're solving problems. Yeah. Oh, um, you, yeah, you're yeah, seeing yeah. patterns. Yeah. You're seeing patterns, and yeah. um, which mm-hmm. means you're probably pretty good um, at recognizing patterns in, in game because obviously you're, you're doing something much more important. You're working with the human body and trying to keep people on the court and people active and moving. So talk um, a little bit about, obviously, you, you know, JBB United, National Pickleball League. Mm-hmm. I cover them extensively. Mm-hmm. Um, how did that relationship uh, yeah. start to, to form? So it goes back with uh, Engage. Uh, Engage, obviously, the paddle company. Um, yeah. I was in the state of New Mexico and just kind of fishing through and learning the sport. I wanted to learn who were the top dogs in the sport. As far where I as live, New Mexico. And, <laughs> oh, really? I was in Albuquerque, man. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, I, I was in Albuquerque. Uh, my, you know, uh, Mesa Manzano Courts was my favorite yep. every morning. That's what I had yep. for breakfast. Huge place. Okay, <laughs> so um, I um, really wanted to learn the inside and outs of the sports. I'm like, if I'm going to get involved in this and I'm going to try to make a living with this and just really, and I love it myself, like, yeah. who are the winners yeah. who used to be, like, where's the foundation? And I came across Engage and they have camps. And yeah. they're following the structure where they have camps going around the country. <laughs> and I was doing some math and I'm like, the average camp holds about 22 to 40 people. And then the age group. Right. And then right. the need of, wait, no one's doing dynamic warmups before they go out there. No one's there to keep their backs loose while they're there. So it was a few phone calls to engage a few emails. Uh, so yeah. the idea of letting me go and um, be the guy for your camps to keep everybody healthy for three days in a row. Wow. And um, yeah, I was standing there talking to a gentleman. I didn't know who it was Bob at the time and kind of telling him my vision. And I wanted to be the guy for a team. Um, I loved having those 42 problems to solve. But I wanted um, to do that more consistently. And uh, that's how I got involved with uh, JBB United. Again, same thing. A few phone calls with Bob and a few emails and and, uh, a little bit of patience. And uh, I was able to to get out there this last weekend and, and, and help out with the first event. And it was yeah, right awesome. On. Yeah, yeah. Obviously in, in an area that you know very well, uh, the Chicago land yeah. area season opener. So let's talk about oh, yeah, that. I, going, I went back home for that. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. So, um, talk about the experience, talk about your first, uh, obviously your first gig really with them, um, in, in, in league play. Yeah. I mean, let's, I mean, to be cliche, the energy is, uh, it's, you gotta go see it. You gotta yeah. see it. It's yeah, you do. the energy. Like if, if you, if you have your favorite baseball team and your basketball team, mm-hmm. when you're at their game, you get to be there and feel what the opponent feels and you feel what the home team feels or vice versa. Right. But right. here it's that times 12. <laughs> Yeah, right. right. You've right. got some teams. <laughs> we've got some teams have their mascots. Some teams have their cheers. Some teams have their handshake. JBP. We did a tunnel when everyone, uh, when someone right wins, on. like, you know, there's that. And I was like a sponge for that. And then yeah. second, like it's pickleball at an elite level. Yeah. But a different <laughs> age group. Right. But so still very elite in there. person. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, I look, I'll tell you this part. I came in early on Thursday and they needed a extra to play. Yeah. Oh, I'll go. Boy, was (laughs) that humbling. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was, yeah. I, I did again, my shirt changed to crash dummy instead of uh, fourth guy. Cause man, they were taking advantage of it. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, um, it it was a great experience. Um, a little bit to, to back up some, I was able to work with Connor Garnett, Darian Young and a few PPA players last season and PPA yeah, tour. Great guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like a jackrabbit. His movement yeah, on man. the court. That's an elite athlete. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was able to soak that up, right? So that energy, that atmosphere, again, I'm going to harp on this, but that age group, right? Mm-hmm. There's an age group there, right? Yeah. And then to be able to see what the MPL provides, me being in my 40s, I'm like in between that. Right. So the perspective is there of yeah. what the sport is and where it's going and what it's going to be. Right. So yeah. Um, yeah, that experience was wild. It was great. It was again, fast pace. Um, even though it's a long day, it was very fast pace yeah. and uh, organized. And I'm excited to see, cause I watched last year, I was able to watch from afar. I watch YouTube. I tuned in. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, and I learned, but obviously as it grows, it changes. And I'm excited to see what what's to come. 
And I'm not talking next year. I mean, like two or three years from now. Right. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely. At some level, this is a correct word. It's it's crazy what is happening to pickleball, Mm -hmm. Um, considering it was, you know, uh, mainly a PE sport, which my wife taught 20 years ago and a YMCA (laughs) sport. Yeah. And, and, and now there, <laughs> I laugh every time I say it, but because I, I, I have aspirations to be in it myself, there's a professional league for 50 plus, um, yes. which has aspirations of having 30 teams within the, you know, a five year period. Without and now they have obviously folks like yourself who are, are, are professional and traveling with the teams and it is mm-hmm. becoming very professional, very fast. And I think the thing that you touched upon that I, I, I noticed too is, not only the the energy and the excitement of NPL, but bringing someone like yourself in shows um, another level of professionalism, I believe, yeah. that gives the game and the league specifically a lot of credibility. Um, and I think that, you know, once folks kind of get a, a whiff of what you're doing for a particular team, I think you're going to start seeing yeah. big changes throughout a lot of teams and a lot of um, high end pro players as well of having people that are there for them um, during play, because at this point, you know, I don't know how much um, all these leagues have as far as people that, you know, you can just walk in and, and, and get a, 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 a massage or any sort of adjustment or any sort of evaluation mm-hmm. like that when, especially when you have, you know, 150 some players. So um, yeah. it's nice that, yeah. that you you're in a space that you can help a particular team, but, Talk to me about the professionalism and where you see this game going in that level. Again, I think it's going to grow and that goes off my thought and it's scary, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's a good scary, but it's a good scary. Yeah. Because all I wanted to do, the reason we're on this call now and the reason mm-hmm. I'm here is I just wanted to bring awareness to something that I love. Yeah. Um, once upon a time it was CrossFit, which is huge. Right. But the, the beauty of pickleball, just like CrossFit is and was at one point, not enough people knew about it. Not everyone knew what level it was at. And yeah. I feel that, again, not to disrespect pickleball and compared to CrossFit, but I feel that there is still so many people untouched by the sport yeah. and then how important it is to them as a lifestyle and then the, the benefit of being able to keep yourself and keep the longevity in it. So, again, I think all of those pieces together is going to push the MPL, the PPA, all the acronyms right. and abbreviations forward. But I just set out to really bring awareness to the recovery side of things to keep ourselves going. Right. I, I only have two knees and I messed up one. So <laughs> yeah. let's right. like, you know, let's do the math and keep it going. Yeah. 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 Right so, on. Yeah. So speaking of acronyms, obviously your shirt and your hat and, uh, yeah, you know, shirt. yeah, yeah. Your biz. So talk, talk to me yeah. about it and, uh, and, and what people, um, can find when they go to the website and, and yeah. when they, when they become part of your world, so to speak. Yeah. It's pronounced movement fix. Um, and that's it. Like if you break it in half, I, I like to fix, uh, people's movement patterns. Um, mm-hmm. I'm the weird guy that people watch in a way to where I'm watching how they walk and I'm giving a diagnostic of what might be wrong with them. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Um, and I, I did that as it's bittersweet because I work in pickleball, right? Primarily. Mm -hmm. And I love the sport. I love to watch. So it's hard not to fan out. I like to say, and I'm watching (laughs) some great players, play. but when I, what my intention is to watch them, how they move before and after I put my hands on them or put them under my care. And it's easy to get caught up in the match and who's scoring what, especially when you're in a team's corner. But um, I like to, that's that's I'm the person at the airport that's watching people move. So it, I had a name for it before and it didn't fit. Um, it was too long, and too complicated. And I had to Google it too many times to figure out what it meant. So <laughs> I hired an amazing mentor that was like, dude, what are you trying to do? What is it that you want to do? And it's like, I just want to help fix people movement, whether they hurt themselves or they're trying to move better. Yeah. And I'm on a personal journey to fix my movement as I grow older. Um, so movement fix is what it is. And I like to offer, I mean, what I do offer is recovery and uh, uh, mo- mobility is my biggest thing. Um, I still go and teach uh, movement seminars to local CrossFit gyms or local gyms in the area. Um, so when you go to my website, you'll find who, what, when, where, and why of what Movement Fix is. Um, it's just uh, 
a business to bring awareness to recovery, longevity. And uh, my slogan is we often get our yearly physicals, but how often do we get our movement checked? Right. So, yeah. So I offer um, individual uh, strength programs more specific to what you, whatever your sport is. And right, right now my biggest thing is pickle, pickleball um, and uh, virtual coaching for mobility. So uh, you, you shoot me an email, I send you yeah. an assessment. You can do your assessment at home or in your gym and give me the feedback on your assessment. And then um, I spit out a four week mobility program to help you and measure everything that you got going on or think that you have going on. So, right. Yeah. It could be yeah. that it could be something like you're playing pickleball seven days a week and you might need to rest or it could just be simply your sleep position. But uh, we work together to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. And that's fantastic because it is, it is awesome to have another set of eyes on what mm-hmm. we're doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, with the technology we have today to sit like this, and obviously you can, you know, you can do remote sessions and, and, and such. I think it just, it increases, um, not only people staying on the court, but it keeps them a little bit motivated because, um, uh-huh. they can do things from their own home. Um, yeah. which is what I, I enjoy about kind of the work that you do and others that I've spoken with that, that do this kind of work. Um, and you're, you're doing it in a game where um, efficiency of movement is key. It's a small yeah. court, but yes. um, there are some unusual moves, obviously a lot of lunging and side shuffling and things like that, that you have to take into account. Mm-hmm. Um, so before we let you go, if you're talking to somebody that's really just getting into the game and um, maybe isn't um, super fit or hasn't done things in a while, you know, this is for a lot of us that are 50 plus, this is sort of a rebirth. You know, we think yeah. we can do things that we used to do and maybe we take sure. a little break. So uh, maybe a little parting advice is somebody getting into pickleball and um, concerning their movement. Yeah, for me, it's um, I'm going to speak from experience. It's go slow and Mm -hmm. listen to your body and to elaborate on that it's just simply go out and play right because that's the hardest part go out and play and sit back and reassess how you feel um it's not just sore feet or sore low sore low back sore low back it could be just overall discomfort and just listen to your body keep playing and keep chipping away at it and find someone it doesn't have to be me but find someone to put in your corner that knows the body well and and put that person in your corner to help you really understand the why behind your discomfort if you find any or you yeah. know some at some of you guys can go four days in a row and then crash on the fifth find someone to help you get to that fifth and sixth day uh smart <laughs> smartly you know so yeah, yeah yeah and just be honest with you know i'm learning this i'm 40 some people call me young but i'm getting better i like to say i'm not getting older it's yeah. because like just be honest with yourself and where you're at <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's a hard part to be honest with ourselves because we, we have this narrative we've created in our head Mm -hmm. over time um, Mm -hmm. that, you know, we, we think we can do certain things that we just can no longer do, or maybe we just have to do them a little different. I think is where you kind of come in. in That's the truth, right? I just got to do it differently. I can't do it how I used to. I got to do it differently. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, hey, Chuck, uh, I appreciate your time. This is Chuck Stewart, Movement Fix website below. Check out his website. He's working with JBB United out of the National Pickleball League. And um, he is a performance therapist. He does it all. So he's, a, he's sort of a, a renaissance man when it comes to keeping you on the court and keeping you active. And uh, appreciate your time, Chuck. And uh, hey, you know, I, was, uh, I went to Wisconsin. So uh, go Big Ten. <laughs> oh yeah let's go okay yeah go let's go big 10 man hey real quick will i, yeah. will I see you at PickleCon? i can't I'm, I'm looking forward to that i will be at PickleCon. um i'm okay. I'm, I'm uh i'm on a couple panels i think i'm i'm actually um the moderator for the senior uh panel about senior players Amazing. so um and maybe we can get out on the court and uh embarrass ourselves a little <laughs> hey well war- hey i'll take us through a warm-up we'll be okay <laughs> right on man i appreciate awesome, your man. time and uh yes. look forward to meeting you in person All right. Same to you. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with Chuck. Check out all the links in the description for his work and where you can find him. And you come see both of us at PickleCon this mid-August in Kansas City. All right, folks, at the end of the day, you know what to do. Let's pickle.